Right now it's in the drawers that accept a double bit. This should also take a Pulaski. It will take a shovel here and take a McLeod here. And it's to emphasize the use of parallel filing with the blade, not filing into the blade. Just follow the lines on the file to parallel with the blade. Doesn't matter which way we those well, the ones on top are parallel, the ones on the bottom are slicing. You can touch a place up and then you can do a nice smooth hook it. We don't want to wear the tools out, sharpen them either. You get a you get comfortable? And uh, we're not leaning into it, falling down. In fact, we had a, a 10 foot yellow ring on the garage floor, engine house floor. And that uh, when you're somebody's inside that filing, nobody else is supposed to come in there. Basically, uh, they'd had incidents where Somebody'd walk by close and jog a guy, hit him with their elbow in an accident, and uh, end up costing him some lost time injuries. This really cut back on him. And uh, I'll go get some more tools and show you how they work. I guess the camera's still running here. Setting up a Pulaski. This was designed to run with the file parallel with the floor. You can see that. I like to put a foot on it. Slicing and you're parallel to the floor, and you're sitting down and standing comfortably. It's a little low for me to stand on it, I just about have to sit down on it. It's a little dull right there, I got it. Right there. Use that. That's how Pulaski works. The grubbing ant. One thing I missed, or you missed, is uh, there's a bolt over here. And the notch here. One of my firefighters built this, and this notch needs to be opened out a little bit. But if you're careful, you can get a new one in here. This is this Pulaski is almost 
almost wore out. This should be about that long. And you see the axe heads is getting fairly short too. This should be the last season for this tool. It's going to get a new handle though. Uh, this one's pretty ratty and it's got a split here. I'll put it on my on my list. And this was filed at one time but somebody didn't know what they're doing. I'll tell you about that when I get to that end. When I say they didn't know what they're doing, somebody told them that they had to have a shiny place all the way back to here. And the only way to get that shiny place all the way back to here is to file this flat. And you might as well take a two and a half inch wood chisel and tape it to your axe handle and try cutting with that because it's going to, this is going to stick. I don't know, I can probably not fix it enough to be perfect, but it's uh, we're definitely not going to file anything in this area. It doesn't need it. Needs the edge sharp. It does have a major chip right here. If I try to clean that out, clear the chip. The blade down here would be that clear back here. So I'm just going to hit it. Uh, I won't finish it up today. I'm just kind of showing you. So this is all you need to do to this tool. Now this, I'm not doing the, the Kirby thing right now, but I'm also filing away from the blade that you see I'm doing. Good piece of steel, a little bit soft. A little bit on the soft side, I'd say. I'm going to come back this way now. I'm just going to sharpen the edge. I don't need to touch back here. I'm going to have to do this way. It's hard here and it's soft here. Probably set in the fire someplace. Filing fire tools and, fire and uh, custom axes is kind of a different business. Custom axe, you're going to have a really highly polished edge. This one's going to get sharpened. And then it's going to get a piece of masking tape put on it. And it's going to go in a metal tool compartment to let it rattle around. Hopefully the tape will keep it from... Uh, Sorry about the noise. Hopefully the tape will keep it from dulling the edge completely. And you say, well, you got to take the tape off before you go to work. Well, that ain't how you do it. The first, the first time you cut something with that tape, it's that tape's gone. So it's uh, just protects the edge. One problem is probably what happened with this one. Along with some other ones we had, is rust will grow under that tape. So if you're not watching your watching your tools, checking them every week or a couple of times a week, you could end up with rust grow, growing up under the masking tape. Again, they did the same thing. I'll show you how they did it. They held the spile flat like this. So their boss told them that's how he did it, and they went like this. You see what's going on there? And then how you do it. If you don't have subtle roundness going on every place in this tool head, you're going to have sticking. I'm going to have to make a decision on this, this tool and that. Uh, it's got a pretty good chip here. It's got a couple of chips here. This, uh, this uh, tool's been 
working underground. Yeah, and that's very common for, for Pulaski's. You, you get a root butt on fire under the ground, you, this, is, this is what you uh, use to, to cut them off. And lighten it up now. And I am taking a little, what, I made that one chip smaller. I think we might get it. I made a study of fire tools at one time. I got in an argument with the boss and I really, I really loved it. I found out the other day where the book was I was looking for. And I got in an argument 35 years ago. Anyway, this, this nonsense is they, some people were saying, well, they have to have a shiny like this. So well, that's, that's not the case. I got a 1930-something U.S. Forest Service technical manual that talks about it. And I'll see if I can find it and post it. Anyway, that's how that, that's how you sharpen that. And I'll grab a McLeod. I'll show you how that works. Okay, the McLeod. Six raking teeth and a cutting edge. This is uh, highly utilized in uh, grassland, California. Pine needles, fir needles, brush. There's always a couple of these, at least on a on a short crew and then on a fire crew, like an inmate hand crew. They may have ten of them. Along with cutting tools and Pulaski's, a couple of chainsaws. So, the uh, point of this is uh, this edge is at a 45 degree angle. That can be checked with a tri square if you have somebody that's not, uh, not sure of it. Now, this tool was built so that these two teeth here, one here and one here, Go in there. And you clamp it down. And there you go. This is kind of, kind of interesting because you can uh, you get your 45 degree angle here. And do four strokes. Be better if this tool stand was anchored down, but I don't have room for that here in my junky little truck. I'm tired of going that way, go this way and put see the parallel lines with the and it's just cutting. It's cutting nice. It's got bumped by the rock a little bit. If I put my glasses on, I can see what I was doing. And the last person to sharpen it, sharpened it did it at about uh, 50 degrees. And I'm not going to worry about going back and taking all these nicks out of it. What I would like to do. You can take it. If you need to have a place there, you have a place here, you have a place here, you can move. These are a late model tool head and they're a little flimsy. Because that makes them a little lighter, which is a good thing. But they don't say stay straight. I see daylight there. Where I don't want to see daylight is here. That's why them 
Oh boy, gloves are good. This is low in here. From about here to here. Parallel, never into. And I'm starting to lighten up and then it's done. done. Done enough for what we're doing with it. 45. Again. And I'm going to go first to it. That's a little high right here. Oh, we're down. I use the corners quite a bit. Problem is, it's easier to file here. Uh, but yeah, this is where they get wore off by the rocks. It's easier to file in the middle, so if somebody's not watching, it, they're pushing that out. Yeah, I'm just going to get it so it'll cut grass. Lighten up. And I might even go find my. Oh, you're going to do this too. Should complete my sentences. You know, I think I have a roll of masking tape. I can do this once. I'm not trying to file that, I'm just flattening the junk off back there. Stand by. I had to do a little preventive maintenance on my masking tape roll. Measure out how much you want. This is heavier than what I put on because it's it kind of winterized itself or it set out a little bit or something. It's actually sitting in the sunshine by the door. Then you come in here and you don't take your gloves off to do this either. That's one of the things I used to hear. Oh, I can't work with gloves on. I said that's because you don't work with gloves on. Anyway, it goes on there like that. I'll pull that off before it goes on the edge and put a single layer on so you don't have to beat your way through it. That's three layers. Just because that's the way the roll is right now. Now we'll do shovels. Now you ask, why would you sharpen a shovel? It's a little different shovel. Notice the steep angle. This is made as, as a combination. It's a scraping tool as well as a digging tool. On a, most crews, even if you put one together on a fire truck with three or four people, one of them's going to have a shovel. One thing, it's a good thing for the boss to lean on while he's watching everybody else do the work. Anyway, back to the tool. This goes here. And it goes right there. Not moving, right? Sharpen it from the point to here. Leave this thick and strong here. You don't go clear back. Just about uh, this. Whoever sharpened this went too far. I got uh, newbies working for me, so say three and a half inches. 
it left alone and you sharpen to the point back to there and again it's like a 45 degree I'll edit that out what am I looking at here oh, okay now you got a sharp edge here so you on this side it's just sharpened so you want to be kind of careful where that hand goes so one way to do that is anchor the hand And lighten up as you get done. Well, the only touch there we got sharpening tools we went to, was on a shovel. I'm not getting perfect here. I just wanted to demonstrate this tool. And it was primarily designed for People, for one thing, that couldn't figure out what, what angles were. Rookies or new firefighters, they get them used to what their tool is actually supposed to look like. That. And if you had 20 people all sharpening your tools, you want them all to do it the same. That can be a little hard, but that's, uh, that's what they use. It's invented by a fire crew foreman in... Uh, in California, I'm not going to name names. Not, not that he'd care. But uh, or maybe already mentioned it. I'll edit that out too. Probably edit this mumble jumble. There you go. Just a sample. Again, this is just a sample of how the different tools fit this device. Call it a fire tool holder or at least that's what the video is going to be entitled. Just a quick run by on, on how stuff fits. Take care y'all.